What if we told you that there was an untapped green energy source in the centre of London? An energy source that was more consistent and more reliable than solar or wind. An energy source with no air, noise or visual pollution. We are Phoenix and we propose to install turbines between the arches of London bridges. Phoenix will generate 85.8 gigawatt hours of electricity, which is enough electricity to power 23,000 houses. It will reduce London's annual CO2 emissions by 31 million kilos. So how will we do it? Well, the Thames gets tides of seven meters and water speeds of two meters per second. We've identified 28 suitable bridges in Greater London. And on these, we believe that we can install 70 turbines. These will each have an output of 140 kilowatts. The turbines will be 20 meters by five meters. They'll be raised five meters above the river floor to access the faster water speeds, which leaves 10 meters above them, which is a generous clearance for boats. The largest boats in the Thames only actually reach two meters underwater. We will use Gorlov water turbines. These are optimised for use in water with an efficiency of 35%. They require a low minimum water speed to rotate and the horizontal geometry is ideal to fit under bridges. By using the existing bridge geometry, the turbines will be cheap and easy to install. The cables simply have to run up the legs of the bridges. Conventional hydroelectric plants use damming, which is impractical for river traffic and destructive for the environment. And as you can see here, conventional underwater turbines use the classic circular shape, which would not work for the Thames. They would also require expensive mountain infrastructure on the base of the river. Felix does not have these problems. Felix will be beneficial for all Londoners. It will generate enough electricity to power 23,000 homes, and it will do this without taking up any of the precious land that London is desperately short of. It also comes without the traditional complaints associated with wind farms being an eyesore. And in the process, it will create lots of local green collar jobs and boost the local economy. Felix will also be particularly appealing to the government. It aligns and would help facilitate London's target of producing 15% of its energy locally and renewably by 2030. This will be a massive help in gaining the necessary approval to implement this, this uh, project. Felix has been designed to minimise the environmental impact. The turbines will be located at depths that diving birds can't reach. The gentle vibrations of the turbine will also reroute fish through the unoccupied arches on bridges. As well as this, it does not have the environmental drawbacks of conventional dam-based um, power plants. This is all before you account for the 31,000 tonnes of carbon dioxide it will prevent from being emitted. Large-scale renewable energy projects are very expensive. 37% of the, the cost of offshore wind farms is spent on floor mounts and high-voltage undersea cabling. We eliminate these costs. The London Array, London's closest wind farm, costs on average 2.86 million pounds per megawatt. Our estimates suggest that Felix will cost less than 1.8 million pounds per megawatt. This is a massive saving. So how else we funded? We would like to implement a three-point plan into routine funding for our project. Firstly, we seek out technical, financial and commercial consultancy. Obviously, this comes with an associated cost, and we believe we can access this through the £10 million fund, which is part of the Mayor of London's new Green Deal initiative. This initiative focuses on the decarbonisation of London by 2030, increasing green collar jobs, and also supporting SMEs in response to the recent pandemic. This advice will allow us to fine tune our ideas and have the financial knowledge to gain more investments from governments and private investors. Moving to step two, this will be government funding. There are a range of fun funding sources available from the government, but we believe the Mayor of London Energy Efficiency Fund is the most applicable in our scenario. This is a 500 million pound fund focusing on accelerating low carbon projects for helping London reach its net zero ambitions by 2050. This fund has also been historically very successful. In its first two years, they spent nearly 45 million pounds on supporting several um, various SMEs. And the result of this was the saving of 12,650 tons of carbon dioxide emissions. This funding will allow us to develop our turbine ideas from ideas to reality and perform various tests. 
The main goal is this, is to have evidence that our charges are a success and can be implemented in a real world scenario. This will allow us to move on to phase three, reaching out to investors. After the initial funding and development of the product, we will reach out to investors in, in the form of venture capital firms or private investors in the form of large companies or um, any other forms. We will also back this up with the evidence that our turbines are effective and that they work. A previous example of this is the Orbital Marine Power Company. This is a tidal power renewable energy company. And since our initial development, they have been able to raise $20 million in the forms of venture capital, private and equity crowdfunding. So, how long will this take? We are lucky that in the sense of our design, the Heathcote turbine has been first designed in 1995, yet the patent for this ended in 2014. Therefore, we feel like we will have no legal issues in implementing, in implementing this into our river-based design. Moving to the present day, by the end of this year, we, we project that we'll be able to perform various Thames site assessments. This means we will go up and down the River Thames, observing each of the potential sites. We would register parameters such as flow rates, river depth, river width, and any parameters related to our turbines. This will allow us to find the optimum location for our uh, pilot site. To this, at this pilot site, by 2023, we will be able to perform various commissioning tests on our turbines, uh, evaluating the performance and the resilience of the turbines into, in response to natural um, or uncontrollable disturbances. After this, we'll be able to optimise our turbines for a 2026 citywide rollout. But this isn't where Phoenix ends. Across London, there are many private and publicly owned pontoons, such as all of these TFL river bus stops. We believe some of these would be suitable for our turbines. In addition, London has an extensive canal network. Some of these canals would also be wide enough for our turbines. But finally, as the technology becomes cheaper, it would also become economical to build custom foundations in the Thames, which would open up many, many more sites. Across Europe, there are 38 rivers which have a greater discharge in the Thames, which means these could produce more electricity even than what we could do in London. In addition, across the world, many cities and capitals are built on rivers, and of course, there are many bridges. So Felix is, has the opportunity to be exported worldwide. Thank you for listening and we welcome any questions.